We're gonna bring up Shane Moynihan, who is actually over here in the neighborhood first. Just tell us a little bit about the, uh, he's a CTC recipient. Come on up. Yeah. I like his shirt. I like his shirt, yes. Cancel property. Thank you. Thank you, James, so much. Hello, Hamilton Heights. Hello, New York City, and hello, everybody at home. Don't mind me watching my paper. I was cleaning this up for a little bit. Um, I am so excited to be here today. I grew up just a couple miles north in Washington Heights. On a bus, a real one. Exactly. And I'm excited to be here today to fight with you all for a basic income for all Americans and to share my perspective as a parent who has now received three monthly payments of $300 thanks to the expanded child tax credit plan as part of the American Rescue Plan. Let's give a hand for that, CTC. We got it done. It's only the beginning. And, but I have to say, it is definitely a bittersweet feeling because we have to go on and we have to see so many people who are not parents still struggling. They need that $300 more than I do. That's why I believe personally in a universal basic income as the end goal or a UBI where the floor is raised for all Americans and hopefully one day for everybody in the country and the world. But we have to start somewhere. And given this country's poor track record of supporting parents and children, we're the only country who does not have federally sponsored widespread programs across family leave and childcare, for example. Given that poor track record, this program is a very welcome program and long overdue. Being a parent is by far the most rewarding thing that has ever happened to me. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. But parenting is work. Caretaking is work. Volunteering in our community is work. None of this shows up in the GDP. Unpaid work, it's all unpaid. And right now that garners, garners very little glory, if any. I've been a stay-at-home dad for five years now. It's my beautiful princess in front here, Quinn. And I have to be honest, if you know me, you already know this story, but I'm very open about it. I'm an open book, and I'll tell it to anybody who will listen, that being a stay-at-home dad for me has been a very personal choice. Let me be clear. If it were up to my wife, I would be working in a cubicle right now, or at least on Monday, uh, nine to five, even if it meant not really loving what I'm doing, and even if it meant paying what I would call a stranger to watch our child, that never made sense to me. Luckily for me and my daughter, and I would argue for the whole family, I am a very stubborn man. For anyone who is not a parent, everything you hear is true. When they're born, they become your world. When that happened to me, I was not about to let go. As long as me and my family are surviving, paying our bills on time, I will make every effort that I can to remain a stay-at-home father because I think it's important to spend time with your children, if you can. I am very grateful and very lucky that my wife, she could not be here today because she's working, doing clinicals, grinding, getting another certification, getting another degree. I mean, she's like Kanye West with the degrees like from that skit, except she really is putting them to use. Um, like, so I, like, God bless you, Marie, thank you. Um, now, I do find part-time work here and there, but I, I am very cognizant of how grateful and lucky I am to be in the position to do this, and that's why I'm fighting for this for other people, so they can do the same thing. My full-time dad journey began in 2016 when I was laid off from my job in the healthcare industry while my wife was pregnant. I was so nervous to tell her for fear of the stress that it may cause her and my daughter inside of her belly. I had heard horror stories. So I pretended to go to work for a couple weeks. 
I would wake up, get dressed, go to Panera, look for jobs, come home, put my clothes in the hamper. Um, technically, technically, I never came clean on that to her on my own. I got caught. I got sloppy. I, uh, I stopped packing my work clothing in my bag to dump in the laundry. She's like, wait a minute, shouldn't you have five shirts in there by now? Uh, so she figured it out. And um, you have to imagine this did not, this did not go over well, uh, especially when you consider that on our very first date, my wife legitimately asked me if I had a 401k. <laughs> the, some of you might be thinking right now, wow, this guy is really throwing his wife under the bus. But no, let me, uh, let me be clear, I do not blame her. I can't. Things have changed in this country. The cost of living has skyrocketed. I don't have to tell that to you, New York. And overall, wages have remained stagnant. Americans are all wound extremely tight right now. Mental health is on the decline. The pandemic made everything worse. One third of Americans right now show signs of clinical anxiety. It used to be the case in this country that a family could flourish with only one parent having to work while the other parent took care of the children and the household. Heck, they, sometimes they even got a pension. Often. Big companies cared about their workers. They cared about their community, their city, their town. Those days are long gone. Starting in the 1970s, we the people became expendable and the shareholder became paramount. And for whatever reason, the CEO became the king. So no, I cannot blame my wife for wanting security. For wanting security and to have our basic needs covered in the present day and in the future. That is what we all need. I have a little math to drop. In 1970, only 31% of two-parent households in America had both parents working. As of 2015, that's up to 46%. It's a coin flip right now if you can spend time with your child. In 1965, the CEO to typical worker pay ratio was 21 to one. For every 50K that we made, they made a million. 1989, ratio is up to six to one. That's three million. Right now, 351 to one. We make 50K, they make 17 million. There is no reason for that. I'm sorry. Like, you can make it, but you're gonna pay it in taxes and we're gonna get a UBI. All right, let me, let me do the turbo version here real quick. Let's face it, we have a broken economy, we have a broken tax code, but we're still the wealthiest country in the world and we can't afford to take care of our own people. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. said it best, if our nation can spend $35 billion a year to fight an unjust evil war in Vietnam and $20 billion to put a man on the moon, it can spend billions of dollars to put God's children on their own two feet right here on earth. We need new money, we need to invest in ourselves and in our future, we need a trickle up economy. In July, when I got my first child tax credit payment, I ran out to our local hardware store and I got an air purifier, one of many in my house, in my apartment, you know why? Because we have construction going, like, we can barely breathe. I got that done. August, we got a flat tire. Those things are not cheap. September, school supplies. These things are all going back into the economy and they're gonna be going back up to the top anyway. Let us have a little bit first. I have found that people know best how to solve their own problems. We need to empower each other to do just that because the world as it is now is not the world that we want to leave to our children. So let's keep going. Let's go.